In this video, I wanna talk about IPOB and Open Door again. Remember, the vote is today to finalize the merger. Come Monday, we will not be trading IPOB anymore. We will be trading a new ticker symbol. It will be trading under the ticker symbol OPEN. And we're gonna talk about an article that I found, and I think it's a really, really good article because it shows both the potential downfalls, the valuation that is that, according to this person, is kind of high for Open Door. And I wanna be fully transparent with this opportunity and not just show you the my view through my rose-colored glasses about Open Door. I'm still very, very bullish on this, and I think this article is a bullish article as well, and I'll show you why by the end of it, so stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. I'm Richard Allen. We talk about stocks on this channel, and this is by far one of my absolute favorite companies to talk about. It's IPOB and Open Door, and I'm really excited about this opportunity. But I wanna share an article with you that says, if you think this market is a bubble, Open Door is exhibit A. IPOB stock looks like trouble if and when this market ever dives. And I think this person makes some really good points in this article, and that's what I wanna talk about. I wanna cover not only the good about a company, I wanna also cover the potential pitfalls so again, you can make more informed decisions. Now, every time I do an IPOB video, every time I talk about Open Door, we talk about your concerns as well and I address them and I tell you why I disagree. And I think that's part of my job as, as making, in making this content is that I can give you a well-rounded, unbiased look at these companies and kind of go over everything, okay? I don't just wanna talk about the good with a company. I wanna cover the potential bad as well, but I'm betting that the good in this situation outweighs all of the bad, okay? So let's, let's just run over this article again. It says, if you think this market is a bubble, Open Doors Exhibit A. Now, Tom Nash posted a fantastic video, I believe it was just yesterday, um, about a, a, a potential market crash. And he thinks it will be coming next year. So, that's something to pay attention to. Now, a lot of you have that concern with Open Doors. What happens if a market crashes, if there's a real estate crash, or, or on and on and on? And those are valid concerns that I think this article covers pretty, pretty well. So let's just jump right into it. He starts by saying, I've been skeptical towards IPOB stock since it, it, it announced its merger with online real estate company Open Door. From a short-term perspective, that call hasn't played out. He says, indeed, I've called IPOB one of the SPACs that investors should avoid. Yet IPOB stock has rallied nicely since early November and is challenging all-time highs at the moment. He says, admittedly, this has not been a market for skeptics, but from a longer term perspective, there are still many questions surrounding Open Door. Competition is intense. The business model is unproven. Valuation looks stretched at best and extreme at worst. For growth stocks like IPOB, the market consistently has looked past those questions as long as the company delivers. And with Open Door not likely to deliver earnings again until as late as February, IPOB stock can continue to run. If 2021 earnings report impress, next year's trading could be strong as well. This is the first point I wanna talk about. He's right, IPOB slash open soon, right? Will, will likely not give us any sort of earnings report until January, February, March of next year, okay? That's important to note because this will have more room to go up until then, right? And then at that moment, they will either impress or not. That, that will be the first earnings report as a technically a public company, and then it'll be up to them to deliver solid numbers. Now, I don't believe they will deliver solid numbers. They may deliver an expectations beat, but I don't believe they will. This year has been really tough. Again, this is a long-term play for me. I'm betting that they will revolutionize the real estate industry, that they will be the ones left standing when all the other iBuyers decide, yeah, you know what, we're gonna stick with our online stuff, we're, we're, we're done iBuying. I'm betting that Open Door will be around when that happens, and I could be wrong, and I may lose my shorts because of it. But, but this is one point we've gotta keep in mind. There's a good chance that Open Door will not have stellar numbers come that first report. And when that happens, there's a chance that the stock will fall because of it. And we're gonna talk about valuation here in a second. 
uh, because valuation is much higher than the initial $5 billion that uh, we thought it was going to be with Open Door. So let's continue. So he said, so I'm not recommending that investors short IPOB stock. Open Door isn't a fraud. It isn't already doomed. Rather, the stock seems priced for perfection, like so many other names in the market. And it does seem like if anything less than perfection arrives, Open Door stock will struggle. It's a really good point. So to look at publicly traded sources, Open Door's valuation seems potentially reasonable. IPOB currently has a market capitalization of about $1.35 billion. But implied valuation is far higher. IPOB shareholders only will own about 6.6% of Open Door, according to the merger presentation. Existing shareholders are keeping roughly 79% ownership. Post-merger, there should be about 630 million shares outstanding. So he goes on to do the math. Here we go. At a current IPOB stock price of $26, that gives Open Door a market cap of $16.4 billion, and that is a huge number, and I agree. 16.4 is much, much higher than the $5 billion valuation or 1x revenue that we were told it was going to be, right? And that's normal with all SPACs, so keep that in mind. So he says, bear in mind that Open Door expects revenue of about $2.5 billion this year. That's half of what they had last year. He goes on to say 6.5 times revenue doesn't necessarily seem like a big multiple, but Open Door's revenue is not all that profitable. The company is targeting EBITDA margins of just 4 to 6%. We've talked about that. That's a concern of your guys is that why would I invest in a company that only has 5% margins? This doesn't make any sense. And that's why my last video talked about the services that IPOB will soon be offering. Right now they offer title and escrow services and they just started offering mortgages. The other services they do not offer yet, but they will in the future and that should increase their margins by a lot. I do not have exact numbers. One of you asked me, a lot doesn't give exact numbers. Well, Open Door doesn't have exact numbers for those yet, okay? My, my guess is their margin should go up by a few percentage points. So they're not gonna have this traditional crazy margins of like 67, 70% that we see with some tech companies, but they could certainly, as they pivot into different businesses, they could certainly increase their margins by a lot. So we need to keep that in mind. So this next part goes on to talk about the market. The most obvious risk is that Open Door's market remains unproven. And that's, that's sort of right, right? They have alg algorithms that give them price points, okay? They're developing these algorithms that give them the right price, they go on to say, right? But it is far from a perfect process. It's well possible that enterprising customers figure out how to game the system or that Open Door suffers occasional losses as weaknesses in the methodologies are discovered. Could be true. In other words, as Open Door does, that real estate is ripe for disruption. But it may well be that the idiosyncratic nature of most homes, along with the importance of the transaction to buyers and sellers, makes that disruption far more difficult in practice. I, I would agree with this statement if they didn't buy and sell 18,000 homes last year, if they didn't have $5 billion in revenue, if they didn't already have a proven model that's working, okay? And, and as they get into more and more markets, as people become more and more digitized, right, with, with technology, this is something that, again, I'm betting will take over the real estate industry, but I could be wrong. So he goes on to talk about competition. If the market is real, meanwhile, Open Door likely won't have it all to itself at the moment. Open Door is the leading eye buyer in the US by a healthy margin, but Zillow is moving aggressively into the space. Redfin has an offering, so do Offerpad and other startups. Again, this is a concern that you guys bring up. Zillow has already, I mean, he's saying moving aggressively into the space. Zillow took a step back this year from eye buying, um, so I'm not sure why he thinks they're moving aggressively into the space because they were over the past few years, but they make a lot of money on the software side of things um, that, that I, I don't know if they need to do the iBuying business, but they certainly could dive in further into this business, okay? He says, the concern isn't necessarily that those rivals will knock Open Door out of its top market share perch. There's also a risk that the flood of capital into the industry will lead to lower pricing. 
with EBITDA margin targets topping out at 6%. A point or two of pricing pressure suggests significantly lower peak earnings power, and that in turn suggests a much lower valuation for open door stock. Another very very, very valid point. So that will be the deciding factor for Open Door and IPOB, guys. If they can't increase margins over the next five to 10 years, they will not be successful in this space. You, you, you can't run a business that isn't Walmart <laughs> on like 4% margins. You just can't. And, but I think they're doing the right things right now to be able to increase margins over time. So I, I, I really, really do. Right here, it says, those skeptical arguments get to one of the more interesting aspects about IPOB, its relation to the market as a whole. Investors and analysts can question valuation, worry about competition, or hold skepticism toward the long-term model. In this market, those factors simply haven't mattered. Growth has been awarded, and whether it's Chewy or Amazon or Tesla or XYZ, skepticism has not paid off. Open door may not be much different. Luke Lango argued on this site that the company could become the future Amazon of the real estate market, which on the whole is worth $1.6 trillion annually. Lango makes an intriguing argument. Success in buying and selling real estate could allow Open Door to expand its services and its revenue potential. And so there is a parallel here between Open Door and other growth winners. Selling IPOB stock because Open Door is just a low margin real estate play is like selling Amazon because Amazon was just a bookseller or selling Tesla because it's just a car company. It's the long-term opportunity that investors are buying and paying up for, even if that opportunity can't yet be perfectly quantified. He goes on to talk about whether or not this is a bubble. It says, I'm sympathetic to that case. But I also wonder if the market has taken that case too far. There are risks to that case. Not every company is Amazon or Tesla. Not every CEO is Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. And you guys have pointed that out as well, that this guy isn't Jeff Bezos. He's not Elon Musk. And that I don't necessarily believe. I, I think their CEO knows what he's doing. Th this, is a, this is a guy who became a self-made millionaire in college buying real estate with his student loan money. <laughs> this guy knows how to hustle. I've been talking about this company for a long time and I'm very, very excited about it. And I, I would encourage you to look into the CEO. He knows what he's doing and he knows how to hustle and he knows how to build a company. He goes on to say, meanwhile, at some point, valuation has to matter. Bear in mind that not only is Open Door valued at 16 billion, but Zillow has added roughly 13 billion in market value just this year, and Redfin has tacked on almost 4 billion. Those gains mean investors are paying a much higher price for any iBuying opportunity than they were 12 months ago. And the gains suggest that the market is minimizing or even ignoring the very real risk facing all three companies that someone is going to be the loser. Maybe it's open door, maybe not. But at this price, the risk among many others just isn't priced in. Again, we, I just talked about it. I believe that open door will be the winner in this space. I believe that others will say, you know what? It's not worth my time. And that will open the door <laughs> for open door to increase their market share, to become more dominant, to increase their services, to potentially raise their fees, to increase their margins. I mean, this, is, this, this company could really revolutionize the real estate industry, guys. It really, really could. And come Monday, we will be trading under the ticker symbol OPEN. Now, I've talked about SPACs having pullbacks after they go public. There is a good chance that OPEN will pull back at some point, but it could run up a lot, right? between now and the time that it pulls back and it may never pull back down to this 27, 28, $26 price point, okay? But it could drop further and I, I, and I want everyone to be prepared of that eventuality that it will correct, the market corrects itself and I believe that that will also be the case with Open Door because a lot of you guys ask me, well, where's a good entry point? Where's a good entry point? Was there a good entry point to buy Amazon 10 years ago? Was there a good entry point to buy Tesla a few years ago? Did it seem overpriced? Absolutely. Again, I'm not saying that this is for sure going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not a financial advisor. 
but I really like the prospects of Open Door, and I like what they're doing on the back end to make sure that they are the success story in the iBuying scene, okay? So, guys, that is all I have for you for this video. Remember, we posted a live stream last week to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. We just surpassed 20,000. You guys are absolutely amazing, but I committed to give away $2,000. I already found one person to give $500 to. We're still giving away 1,500 bucks, split between three of you. So get down into that live stream. All you have to do is comment and you'll be entered into the drawing to win 500 bucks. That's it, three more people. And so far you have a pretty good chance of winning because there aren't thousands and thousands and thousands of comments to choose from. Again, thank you guys so much for 20,000 subscribers now. Um, I'm absolutely blown away. I'm humbled by it, I'm excited um, and I, I uh, am, very excited for the future of this channel and what next year will bring to all of us. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. As always, if you didn't already do it, click that beautiful red subscribe button down below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.